I'm John Bowden. It's part one of our exclusive interview with rock and roll greatness from the Young Rascals and the Rascals, Felix Cavallari. There were a lot of hits, like the number one smash hit single, Good Lovin' in 1966, followed by You Better Run. In 67, I've Been Lonely Too Long. That reached number 16. Groovin', their big number one hit. That was in the summer of love, including A Girl Like You. In late summer, it was How Can I Be Sure, a big one that hit number four. And there were more, A Beautiful Morning in 1968, and People Got to Be Free, their last number one hit that same year, 68. By the way, I'm kind of curious, when you left home, when you said, okay, I'm taking my pots and pans, I'm leaving, <laughs> when you left home, what was in your what was in your record collection? What, what was in there? Oh, man. Well, you know, I, I, I started off, you know, as I say, classical. And uh, I, I tell this story because, you know, a dear friend of mine, uh, I, I went to my first day in junior high. And uh, I was brought up very strict musically because as a classical pianist, you're really not supposed to listen to too much else. And this guy who was in front of me, who's later to become my one of my best friends because his name was C-A-L and mine was C-A-V. He turned around and he said, you like rock and roll? I didn't even know what he was talking about. But I said yes, because I didn't want to feel like, you know, well, you know. Yeah. I went home that night and I turned on this little transistor radio and I heard Alan Freed. See, because Alan Freed went from Cleveland to New York City on WINS. He brought rock and roll to, you know, New York. And I heard piano players, Jerry Lee Lewis, Fats Domino, and Ray Charles. And I said, what is that? <laughs> you know, I never heard anything like it. But I, I heard, and, and, and from a musical point of view, I understood what they were doing. I could, could I play this? I don't know. Let me try it. You know, it just... It it was like uh, just an epiphany, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God, this is so cool, you know. So basically, that that's how I got into like you know like a, we would call a modern pop music, rock and roll, whatever it was, you know. And and I came in as a super fan. Best way to come in. <laughs> and 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 so most of the people from my generation, you know, I mean, like you know, we talked to the Kinks and we talked to the Zombies. We talked to they, they're all the same. I mean, they, they did the same thing with the Chuck Berries and you know all these people like the Hollies. You know, I, I mean, and uh, Buddy Holly and and they, they just said like, wow, man, I want to try this. You know, I want to do this. That's how it starts. You know, so when I left home, I, I left for college. I was in pre med. I, I was supposed to be in the medical world. And, and what happened basically in my at the end of my sophomore year, uh, I had a little band in, in college and we went to the mountains, the Catskill Mountains to work for a summer. And, and I kind of got discovered there by this group called Joey D and the Starlighters. They had come in as headliners and they were in Europe. And the organist for their group had just been recently married and he decided to quit and he left them on tour. They remembered me and called me. And this is how the karma works. <laughs> I was about, you know, about 19, if that, you know, <laughs> and, and flew me to Frankfurt, Germany. The next thing I know, we're in a club with this group called the Beatles opening for us. Who are the Beatles? I don't know, but man, these people here sure love them because they haven't stopped screaming since we opened the door to the dressing room, they are screaming and screaming to Beatles. What the heck is this Beatles Beatles? And I saw and heard before they came to the United States, it was like a year before the, they came to do the uh, Sullivan show. So 63. Yeah. Yeah. I said, wait, wait a minute. What is this? You know? And, 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 and I said to myself, Hmm. Musically. I get it. I could do that. Everybody's screaming. They got all these girls screaming. I said, hmm, this looks like it could be a good career, you know? So uh, I really said, wow, let me try this, you know? And, and, and that's really what turned me because I, I, I was going back to school, you know, and, and then I got this offer. So it really was very karmic. What was your impression of the guys? Well, really, uh, literally, uh, when 
I thought they were more of a singing group than a playing group. I really wasn't that crazy about their, their, their instrumentation. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I thought they were more of a singing group when they did American songs. I thought they were kind of lame. <laughs> I mean, their soul was, was not exactly in the same, uh, uh, you know, place as, uh, you know, the stuff I was listening to the Sam and Dave's and those people. But when they did that thing, they call, what do they call that? I want to hold your hand. They did their songs. You just had to set back and go like, whoa, what's that, man? Check that out. Because it was different. You know, it wasn't like I'm copying, you know, this. I'm not trying to do like, a, you know, like Johnny B. Good. I'm trying to do this. And this obviously was magic. Absolutely magic. And you could feel that, you know, like, oh, God, that's cool, man. That's really cool, you know. But it, it didn't throw me into a place where I said, I can't do this. It threw me into a place where I said, I could do this. Yeah. Let me try it. And, and, and it really helped me, you know, to, to, to motivate me to try this. Bobby Rydell once told me, he says he met, uh, he met them on a tour when he was over there before they, again, and he said the same thing, which he says, and he said, everyone said this, the Beatles. What, what kind of name is that? <laughs> right. But you said the same thing musically that I'm saying. He felt they were a little weird with American. No, no, stuff. he just felt the name. He just because oh, the name. Yeah. The, he said the, the first thing people do. It's like when you first hear the Bare Naked Ladies is a name for a band. You can't stop. You think about Bare Naked Ladies, but after well, a while, nowadays, you know, nowadays, nowadays nothing, nothing, yeah, yeah. nothing surprises you now. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We'll have more from Felix Cavallari coming up in a few days. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. You want to donate to the channel at the very top of the description? There's a link where you can do that. Or you can buy a t-shirt. That helps the channel as well. We have t-shirts for Rock History Music, Rock History Book, and Rock History Canada. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Music.